A story on Bank Negara Malaysia forex scandal that involves a huge 10 figures losses, bank bailout, and these political leaders? Truly shocking, embarrassing, and mysterious all at the same time. So I suggest that you stay a while and listen. Disclaimer, links to all sources are available below. None of this is cerita dongeng or my imagination. Nope. Now Malaysia in 2017, wow. PM6 was still in power. PM10, well, before he became PM, lah, exposed that he got the numbers. Well, not this kind of parliament number six, yeah. But this is a different number, much larger. That Malaysia lost between 15 to 30 billion ringgit due to forex trading losses in the 90s. For those of you who are still zygotes in the 90s, of course you know that Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim was the finance minister from 1991 to 1998 under PM4, Tun M, before he was sacked by Tun M. Of course, what he said is credible as he had all the insider knowledge of things. And oh, by the way, it was a time when 2 ringgit and 50 cents can buy 1 US dollar. He told a task force formed in February 2017 to investigate this Bank Negara forex scandal that over three decades after it occurred, PM10 claimed that the then Bank Negara Malaysia government, Tan Sri Jaffa Hussein, admitted to him that it was Bank Negara Foreign Exchange Division head, Tan Sri No Muhammad, responsible for this loss, but did not provide a complete report on the billions of ringgit in forex losses. But forex trading by Bank Negara on the pretext to stabilize or defend the ringgit. Halal ke haram? I'll let you be the judge when you watch this till the end. Now this Bank Negara forex scandal was actually first brought up by DAP Stawart retired politician Uncle Lim Kit Siang in Parliament back in 1993. He even wrote a book titled The Bank Negara 30 Billion Ringgit Forex Losses Scandal. But nobody gave a shit that time. But he persevered, patiently, waited until the cows come home. And finally, in June 2017, a Royal Commission of Enquiry was formed to investigate. Finally, dream come true. Now can retire as Tan Sri already. But this Royal Commission Enquiry set up during PM6 time was seen as Najib's response to Mahathir's attacks on him at the height of the 1MDB saga. But the findings from the Royal Commission of Enquiry reveal that there were elements of breach of trust and fraud committed by those involved in the Bank Negara Forex trading scandal. Subsequently, the Royal Commission Secretary Dato Dr. Yusuf Ismail lodged a police report in July 2017. Police then launched an investigation by setting up a special team to prop the case. But the potong steam thing is, a few months later, the person who lodged the police report later retracted his police report in November 2017. So case closed, categorized as require no further action due to the lack of evidence to pursue investigation. Now in December that year, 2017, second finance minister during PM6 administration, Datuk Sri Johari Abdul Ghani spilled the beans in an interview. A substantial portion of such transactions were excessive and speculative in nature and did not reflect Bank Negara mandate to just maintain orderly condition of the forex market, citing an audit report by Bank Negara internal auditors back in 1994. More shocking thing is, according to Johari, because of the scale of the foreign exchange speculative activities losses, in 1994, Bank Negara was technically insolvent and that the government had to bail it out by transferring its shares in Telecom and Tanaga National to Bank Negara at a nominal value of 1 ringgit per share. And these shares were immediately revalued by Bank Negara at 22 ringgit and 19 ringgit per share for Telecom and TND respectively. Now, additionally, Bank Negara had to dispose of its Malaysia Airlines share to a third party at the price of 8 ringgit per share and MISC shares at 10 ringgit per share 
to KWAP in order to realize the gain. He further said Bank Negara Malaysia forex losses were very real. If not, the government would not have taken this drastic actions to bail it out back then. In another interview with New Straits Times the same year, former Bank Negara Assistant Governor Datuk Abdul Murad Khalid said the cause of such colossal losses was because there was zero control and that nobody knew what was happening. PM10 in 2017 also said that the new Bank Negara Malaysia Governor in 1994, Tan Sri Ahmad Don put a stop to all this evil and Bank Negara started to compensate for the losses at around 500 million a year. Again, for the Zygots <laughs> watching this, no offense, huh? don't you know that in the 1990s period for Malaysia, Malaysia was the GOAT greatest of all time. We won the Thomas Cup in 1992 while Lee Chong Wei was still 10 years old. Oh, but I digress. Now, it's not a joke, huh? no joke. In the early 90s, Bank Negara was such a fear player in the global forex trading market. Now, Bank Negara was even accused by some forex operators as a market bully, according to Lim Kit Siang in his book. Remember that 2017 Royal Commission of Enquiry, they interrogated a former Bank Negara forex dealer and he confessed that behind Bank Negara take veil of secrecy, there is plenty of opportunities to exploit the forex trading desk at Bank Negara for one's own personal gain because the transaction done there at that time was done manually with no check and balance system before 1994. He also opined that smart individuals inside Bank Negara can profit from insider information. Now, this further confirmed what former Bank Negara Assistant Governor said, Dato Abdul Murad Khalid, on there was zero control and nobody knew what was happening. Now, more shocking is the fact that there were no specific maximum daily limits for forex trading. So it could go up to billions and billions a day. And that is in the 90s. Bank Negara ventured into the infinity and beyond, dealing in 50 million US dollars lots compared with the market norm, which is around 5 to 10 million forex lots, where even US and UK central banks did not dare doing they actually got green with envy and be like, bro, what you do is very concerning eh. And Bank Negara at that time be like, cheese, lampak lah, suka hati ay lah, apa you peduli? Again, this is consistent with what Dr. Sri Johari Abdul Ghani said about substantial portion of such transactions was very excessive and speculative beyond what's simply needed to defend ringgit in the forex market. Tapi, sepandai-pandai tupai melompat, akhirnya jatuh terpelanting juga when Bank Negara face off with the one and only George Soros. Soros bet that the pound sterling would go down, while Bank Negara traders believe it will go up. And you know how this end when Soros since then was notoriously nicknamed the man who broke the Bank of England, profiting 1 billion US dollars overnight in 1992. Now, how about Bank Negara at that time? According to a 1995 book, The Vandal's Crown, how rebel currency traders overthrew the world's central banks. Bank Negara Malaysia lost 3.6 billion US dollars pawns and gg by Soros and Co. In the same book, there are some of the remarks that the author had. Instead of working to ensure global financial stability, Bank Negara repeatedly shoved huge sums of money into the most vulnerable market situations in order to destabilize exchange rate for its own profit. And Bank Negara market manipulation was so horrifying that one American central bank said, if they tried this on any organized exchange in the world, they would have gone to jail. However, in the unregulated international currency market or the Wild Wild West, there were neither police nor jailers. The only rule was the rough justice of the vandals and it was this rule that eventually brought Bank Negara down. Now fast forward to now, where people were urging PM10 to reopen the probe on the Bank Negara Malaysia Forex scandal. Now back in 2020, PM10 said, go ahead. The main thing is, I never stole anything. I never took a cent. I did not take a billion ringgit. I did not take any timber or stocks. And now you understand why Bank Negara nowadays cannot just anyhow suka suka intervene in the forex markets just for the sake of to prop up the ringgit because it would be disastrous 
for such forex loss incidents to happen again today when Malaysia national debt versus GDP has ballooned up since then. Malaysians need to understand there's a difference between speculative foreign exchange activities and orderly management of foreign exchange market. The former is a kind of gambling activity in hope for quick returns while the latter is a liquidity exercise by central bank like Bank Negara today to mitigate the imbalances in ringgit supply and demand in the global forex market to curb inflationary pressures. Since then, Bank Negara management had come a long way, more transparent in implementing reforms, you know, via check and balance and orderly policy reports to the Ministry of Finance with regard to its foreign exchange forward transactions activities. Buying and selling foreign currencies in Malaysia is only allowed with licensed commercial and investment banks as well as licensed money changers. However, think of what this 30 billion ringgit compounded for 30 years can do for Malaysia today. Now, let me do a calculation for you. 30 50 billion with a EPF like return of 5% a year compounded for 30 years is equal to 129.6 billion. Eh? Oh my! Maybe no need to cut here and cut there when it comes to subsidies to all rakyat, right? And definitely more than enough to keep more doctors in permanent government positions. Subscribe and here's the next video you will also enjoy. Like to hear from you what you feel about this sharing.